Hello, I'm Otto Tausk, music director of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra, and joined here by Henry Shepard, um, our principal cellist in the orchestra, um, who will play on two of the concerts we're doing this week, on Friday and on Saturday, a program consisting of music by Wagner and Lalo. We'll come to the Lalo and to Henry later on, but let me first tell you a little bit about the Wagner. We're starting off with the overture, The Flying Dutchman. And of course, coming from the Netherlands, I always feel slightly connected to the Flying Dutchman Overture. After the break, we'll play excerpts from Wagner's Ring. Now, this is a special thing. Wagner's Ring was um, composed for a total of, well, more than 15 hours of opera music. Uh, four operas. And um, personally, I always really enjoy the instrumental parts of Wagner's operas. And we've managed to find gorgeous musical excerpts from his operas, um, telling a little bit of the story of the ring. But um, mainly, I wanted to highlight how incredibly gorgeous and beautiful his orchestral writing actually is. And Wagner was, a, was an interesting figure, um, uh, a very controversial figure, but his music was exceptional and changed music history. Wagner even built his own theatre and um, keeping in mind that his operas took hours, um, he wanted to make sure that his audience uh, stayed awake. So he built the theatre in a way that the seats were most uncomfortable and that you would not fall asleep to listen through to the very, very end. Um, and he introduced more of those, um, let's say, really revolutionary elements. For instance, the, um, the way that he is um, treating motives and the way that he treats the structure of the music. What he called the leitmotiv is a very important element in his music. Leitmotiv being a very recognizable motive um, that is attached or connected to one uh, figure or one idea or one uh, uh, event of nature, like a rainbow or a person, um, the, the, the main character of all of that ring uh, is Siegfried, for instance, and he has this very special call in, 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 theme, in, in, in theme in his music. So every time you see that character on stage, or when you hear them sing, you will hear that music in the orchestra. So this um, light motiven are in the entire work. Um, the other thing that he, he introduced was the, um, the through composing, durch komponiert, they would say in German, where there is now, there's not really a, 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 a transition and an end and a new beginning. It's actually all connected. So the music starts and never stops and just continues and this through composing he, he did in an extraordinary way um, making use of of course harmony and rhythmical structures making use of the orchestral uh, colors um, and introducing an element in, in music that had never been been used before so I really hope you'll enjoy that gorgeous music by Richard Wagner and also the cello concerto of Lalo played by Henry. Henry is the new principal cellist of the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra since, well, actually since the beginning of the pandemic, isn't it? <laughs> yes, in fact, I was given the phone call that I got the job on the same day that everything closed down. <laughs> so the dates line up almost immediately. But actually my first uh, performance of the Lalo this week will be two years to the day of my audition with wow. the VSO. Wow. And I can imagine that coming new to an orchestra, coming new to a city um, must be uh, extra strange <laughs> in a year like, like last year. Well, I, in some ways, yes. The way that I sort of uh, often joke about it to my friends, I say that I have two first years. I have mm -hmm. my, my first year where I came in August 2020 all by myself, and I spent the year basically in my apartment and, and by myself. And, doing these uh, smaller projects with the VSO. And then I have my second first year, which is this year, where we're playing programs for audiences. And it's a new repertoire, a new feeling on stage, and, and, and really special. So I have just I've felt 
this real vitality since I moved here. I just, I feel so lucky, That's honestly. Wonderful. So you, I, I must say, you're, you're a fantastic cellist, but you're also a, an incredible good principal cellist, a really great leader, um, which, which is, I think, more exceptional because you're extremely young uh, for the position. And, and I am told you're the youngest principal cellist in North America. Uh, I can promise you that will not stay like that forever. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, just by like the nature of else. getting older. <laughs> um, but um, how, how is that for you? Do, do you? Are you aware of that or do you feel completely free as a, as a musician in the ensemble? Well, I, th we can approach that from a couple different angles, but I think for me the biggest thing is that the cellist part of it is more important to me than the principal part of the title, mm -hmm. but also from when I was a teenager, my dream was not to be a soloist, it was to play in a great cello section. Right. Um, and so every musical choice that I have made since I was 12 or 13 years old has been geared towards being a great member of a section and being uh, sensitive and thoughtful and really it's like, it's like having antenna <laughs> where you just sense everything that's going around. So I think being thrust into a role like this, I just I'm so excited to be in it because mm -hmm. when you play as a principal, mm -hmm. you are in constant interaction, not just with the cello section, but with everybody sitting around you, with the conductor. Um, I just find it very stimulating. And the, the cello section here has really gone out of their way to make me feel welcome. So it just, Absolutely. It, it, it feels great. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful to have you with us in the orchestra. And this week, you'll be as a soloist in front of the orchestra. Now, I, I can imagine that's a completely different thing. So uh, probably the way you prepare a program is very different, but also the way you, you, you enter the stage, you, 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 you have your ideas of the, of, of, of the piece you want to play. Um, and so, so comparing being a soloist and being in the cello section, even though as a principal, you're still really part of the section, part of this, the string orchestra, part of the entire symphony orchestra, uh, or being a soloist. How, how does that work for you? Is that a completely different mindset? So I am a terrible surfer, but I would compare uh, playing a concerto a little bit to surfing, which mm -hmm. is that when you're, when you're playing principal cello, you are, you're part of the wave. Um, when you're playing the concerto, you are riding on top of it, and you feel the tremendous power of the orchestra behind you. Um, so I think in one sense it's just very humbling because you feel like one individual and you feel the orchestra around you. But in another sense, it's a really great opportunity to um, shape and share your own voice and interpretation. And one really neat thing about this week is um, the Lalo is the first concerto I ever played with an orchestra. Um, so I played this with orchestra when I was 13. Mm -hmm. um, I remember it vividly. I remember the challenges of, of doing that. and. I think to be having that ex experience here on this piece is really special. Mm -hmm. So what's special about the piece? What, what do you think? Well, when I think about what's neat about the piece, I always I like to start with the composer because he was, he was unusual and he was a bit of a rebel. Um, so Lalo uh, was a very smart kid. He had very uh, supportive parents. Um, but like many supportive parents of smart kids, they thought, Music was an excellent exercise, but not a good profession. Um, so when he was 16, he ran away from home. <laughs> and he said, I'm going to Paris to become a musician. Mom and dad said, that's it. <laughs> we won't you know, support. So he, he actually, when he went to Paris, he studied both the violin and the cello, mm -hmm. um, which you know, is why a lot of his writing is really string-centric. But mm -hmm. when he got there, he found himself an outcast because whereas uh, most French composers at that time were beginning to move towards Impressionism, Lalo's favorite composer was Wagner. Um, and he was thinking in a much more operatic way than was the standard at the time. So even with this concerto, you get this sense of song and line and clarity that you wouldn't hear in similar French music, um, which makes it really special and unique honestly. Yeah. I find that a fascinating way to look at the, the music of Lalo as in, in connection to Wagner. I, I think finding uh, connections between composers uh, is, is, is a very inspiring thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I think with, in, in this case too, you can, you can imagine while Wagner spent time in Paris, the musical tradition in Paris at that time was so different. Um, 
and a bit tribal in a way. And, and if you look at Vienna at that time, it was sort of similar where you know, audiences and then also academia supported certain types of compositions. So for the out group, like Lalo or like Bruckner in Vienna, um, it was a real challenge, not, not just getting your music heard, but writing it all. Because you would wonder, why, why should I write right. if nobody will listen? Right. What's neat about this, this Lalo cello concerto is that it and the other works that Lalo wrote became popular very late in life. So, so in Lalo's life and afterwards, Lalo's greatest popularity was in uh, his 50s and 60s. Um, and uh, you know, after that period, the, the cello concerto actually was, for a, for a time, a big part of the standard repertoire. But it fell out of fashion probably in the 1970s or so. So yeah. I like to think that doing this Lalo here is, is a bit of a revival. Because right. um, it used to be a lot more popular right. than it is now. Right. So I, I, what I really like about the concerto is that he, um, he manages to write a piece for a solo instrument that is actually not so easy to write for. Uh, the, the, the cello, is, by nature, is not like a violin, an instrument that you will always hear. If you're, if you're, if you're not careful enough, it's very easy for the solo cello to drown in the symphony orchestra. But I think the way he wrote it and the way the, the, like the, uh, the question and answering going on between the orchestra and, and the solo uh, is, is very skillfully done. Well, what's interesting about this, and this is where you, I think, sense the string player influence. Lalo's great friend and the person to whom he credits his career success was Pablo de Sarasate, right. the, the, the Spanish virtuoso violinist. Um, once, he, when, once he met Sarasate, and I imagine with me it would be the same way, you meet the guy, you, you can't go back, <laughs> right? So that violinistic idea of yeah. composition translated directly to the concerto. And one way you actually see that is the vast majority of this cello concerto is written entirely on the A string, right. which is the highest string, right. um, with a sort of lyricism and, and passage work that is more like what you would expect in a violin piece. Yeah. Um, and it, it just makes it stand out. In, in a sense, it's, it's ahead of its time in terms of what it demands from the soloist, technically speaking. Well, we're really looking forward to that uh, concerto. So you're you're a highly appreciated member of the orchestra as principal cellist. You're, you're a fantastic soloist, but you're also very committed to making the connection to our audience and to the people around us in our community, as a, not just as a musician, but also as an advocate for music, as a personality. Um, maybe you'd like to share some thoughts about that. Well, I, I think for, for this year especially, it, there, there is no feeling like watching people be opened up to music again. Um, I think every single concert we have had at the VSO, I look out into the audience and I see people who are clearly back for the first time um, and being reminded of how in a very personal way this music can come to them. But I also really feel that that playing for me is, is not enough and that it's, mm -hmm. it's the talking mm -hmm. that is useful and not because very often, like when when all the musicians go out to have a coffee in the break, you actually go to members in the audience that are, happen to be in rehearsal to tell them about the music we're playing or or the life as a musician in an orchestra. It, it's it's, it's something you really enjoy. Well, I, I there's a there's a specific moment this year that I recall, which was where sometimes at our dress rehearsals we have school groups come in, exactly. and a couple weeks ago uh, there were a bunch of school groups, and I. Uh, went out with the education department to, to talk to them. And uh, all of a sudden, I realized there was a question that I should ask this group of students. And I said, so can somebody guess how long we've been working on this music? Um, it was the Rachmaninoff uh, Variations on the Rhapsody on Theme by Paganini. Um, and one student raised her hand, and she said, a year? Mm -hmm. And I said, how about a day? And I, instantly, I had the attention of the room. There was something about realizing the time scale How that, we, that, that we work, work? on yeah. that just it yeah. blew their minds and for me right. it was just very validating it was this example of yeah. you sense the power of the orchestra but the more you learn about it yeah. the more amazing yeah. it is yeah so that was that was yeah. pretty cool yeah. It's, it's always fascinating that, that, that so, so how long have you been working a day? Oh, that's fast. But actually, we've been working all our life. Exactly. And, it's and just the, that it's moment, just that where, moment it, isn't where it, where it yeah. comes up. Yeah. But yeah. So it, it's really neat sharing that. And I think also it's just really special. I, I love having those school groups there. They're, mm -hmm. they're absolutely wrapped. Mm -hmm. they, they love it.
Uh, well, and we're very grateful that you, uh, you are our advocate in that way for, for the orchestra and for music in the city um, and in the country, in the world. So thank you for our chat. Thank you for being with the orchestra as a wonderful, inspiring musician and personality. And we're really looking forward uh, to the concerto. Well, thank you for having me here. <laughs> thank you.